with Scott Gerard of Little Feet. Scott, man, thanks for uh, having us today. Yeah, thanks for coming down. God, great to hear you play, dude. Thanks, yeah. man. Yeah, this uh, this guitar was built by uh, the great uh, Dennis Fano. Sure. Who's now here in Nashville. Now here in Nashville, I think he was yeah. originally uh, up east where I live, but uh, this is uh, something he custom made for me. It's a oh, bit of a mongrel. Yeah, let's hear about this weirdo. What's going on here? Well, that's a th these are Lawler pickups. That's a something called the Chicago Steel. Okay. Which I think he was trying to do something that was like Hound Dog Taylor. Sure. But to me, with the six fingers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but to me, it just sounds like a great P90. Yeah. It's noisy as hell, but it's uh, once the band gets going, you don't notice. It's part um, of the charm. Yeah, and that's that's one of uh, Jason Lauer's middle pickups. This is an old '60s uh, Harmony Bobcat that's pickup. That's the real deal. Okay. But I haven't been using that very much with these guys. That's it's um, the whole you know the whole feet slide sound is yeah. a is a pretty specific that's kind a, of. Thing. So I've been trying to find a way to, you know, play the way I play slide. I've been playing my whole life and try to also echo some of what Lil George yeah. created and Paul Barrere, you know. Right, man. You're in a really difficult position because you're a you're a brilliant player, but you want to pay, you know, pay tribute to Lil, of course, and yeah. but do your own thing and walk that line, you know. Well, I grew up going to see these guys, uh, going to see mainly Little Feet and the Allman Brothers. Sure. And, uh, you know, early on, uh, uh, Warren Haynes was one of my early, like, uh, modern influences of my youth because yeah. he had such a, a, a dip, he did such a, a graceful and amazing job with that position he was put in with Dickie. You're, God, you're right. So That's yeah. early on, I, I related to that and I kind of, I put it in my back pocket sort of. And then when I started playing with Greg Allman in 2008, you know, and I played with him until he passed away in 2017, and I was the band leader. And, or, you know, we had a hell of a run, and um, he was he was just so. I learned so much from him. But the best thing about doing that gig was for this gig, yeah. was that every time I went to a gig, everyone there was thinking about everyone from Dwayne Allman to Jack Pearson, right. and Warren Haynes, and Derek oh. Trucks. I mean, they're Dickie Betts. They're thinking about all the cats. Yeah. So, and then you're playing that music, and you got to think, how do I tip my hat? To all this history right. but still be myself right so when i hooked up with these guys being that the catalog was so important to my life as a singer songwriter and guitar player since i was a child i had that and then i had this experience of having to help greg and his own band figure out how to reinvent his own music and his image but right. not lose what he'd created with his brother right and, and those cats so yeah. um you know, it would take a whole nother episode to talk about how I try to make that gel and work right. <laughs> from every angle. Cause yeah. I also, I'm also a singer for this band and it's like, and a songwriter. So it's, it's a, it's a lot of, it's a lot of responsibility. Uh, but I mean, I love every second of it, man. I mean, yeah. you know, and it's, it's really been uh, an absolute trip, you know, for a kid who had, you know, a poster of Lil George on his wall when he was 12. <laughs> right, Trust right. me, my, my friends when I was a kid thought I was insane for like admiring this guy. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's, it's, it's really that deep for me. It's, it's <laughs> destiny, man. I, I hope so, you know, <laughs> yeah. doing my best. Did you ever uh, try the, the uh, you know, spark plug? Uh, first, uh, first slide I ever had, I actually took out of a, out of a socket wrench set because uh -huh. I read that there's that one you can find it very easily uh, there in the uh, Google sphere. Um, that interview he did with Guitar Player Magazine, which I think was towards the end of his life. Yeah. It's a wonderful interview. There's so much great advice for musicians in this interview, so I encourage everybody to look it up. Um, but he mentions the socket. And yeah. um, I found a copy, an old copy of that somewhere um, in my, my young travels to music yeah. stores or something. And I, man, I studied that article right alongside everything else you know at the time it was I, I saw one of stevie ray's last shows i was only uh probably 11 years old but jeff beck and uh, clapton was doing the journeyman stuff with ferroni on drums i mean these guys were just crushing it um yeah. almonds uh, dr john bonnie Raitt. i mean everyone was just you know i was born in 76 so yeah. I, I'm from from that like VH1 Renaissance <laughs> yeah, generation, yeah. I yeah, guess, right. or something. You know? Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. So, and uh, my dad used to work in cable TV. So in the early days, we were the only family, you know, in Michigan or wherever we were that had cables. <laughs> and all we'd watch was music TV. Yeah, right, right. But that's what was on. You know, you'd watch those. Those were the bands. It was like those bands having all of them having this right. second 
revival kind of thing. Right. That's right, kids. MTV <laughs> used to have music on it. <laughs> well, M MTV went, went south a lot earlier than VH1. Yeah, but yeah. yeah, right. Okay, well, this is, is a very cool start, and you're going with three others. Let's see what else you got here. All right, so this, it isn't really all of them, but these are the main players. Yeah, yeah. Um, I imagine at this point you've got a lot of stuff. Well, it's, <laughs> it's, and it comes back to what we were talking about. You know, it's like Paul and Lowell, and I got to, I got to do my thing too. So you, you know, that guitar I was just playing is an open G, which was Paul Barrera's preferred open tuning with oh. little feet. So there's a lot of songs, you know, there's songs like uh, Hate to Lose Your Lovin' and Down on the Farm. And those are like these really signature Paul Barrera open G songs. Sure. Um, and then the open A guitars over there, I'll talk about that in a second. This, this one is uh, of course a heritage. I'm sure you guys see a lot of these. Sure. And, and these cats are really, you know, doing an amazing thing with the, with the vintage Gibson. Oh, yeah. You know, sound and, and uh, uh, my man Pat Foley, who lives here in Nashville now, uh, you know, was nice enough to hook me up with these guys. And they are from Saginaw, Michigan. One side of my family is from there. So there we go. It's, you know, all in the family, as it were. But I, I fell in love with uh, P90s a few years ago. And uh, when they were talking to me about using a guitar of theirs, I said, get me something with P90s, you know. So this is like my, my, one of my main standard tuned guitars. And when we do songs like, uh, let's see, like Texas Twister, Let It Roll, Spanish Moon, Skin It Back, yeah. those are all the standard tuned songs. And on those songs, I really just, just kind of do my thing, you know, which, um, you know, just playing blues on these things. <laughs> You know, she's not polite. <laughs> yeah, it's I, I love this guitar and we, we just made a new Little Feet album and I played this guitar on, on most of this new record we did. Um, all the standard tuning stuff is this guitar and we're back with Lawler's. These are his dog ear P90s. Okay. And uh, that guy knows what he's doing, man. Man, I love the I love the fact that you are switching pickups the whole time and tweaking your tone the whole time. Well, I'm know? always switching between pick and fingers too it's kind of yeah, right I've been doing that since I started playing um you know and and I, I I've just found that what I like to say I was that I have two two ways of thinking of playing the guitar one is you know this hand the fretting hand in the left hand in my case is uh like the right hand of the piano so it's like the melodic and chordal side of the piano yeah. and this hand I think of as a percussion instrument and then that's kind of like the basics of where I start. And yeah. then when it comes to improvising and playing lines, I try to think as much as I can like a singer or a horn player. Uh, otherwise, you can have a lot of run on sentences because if you don't have to breathe, you can just keep picking and picking and picking and right. picking. Right, yeah. Um, and with the picking hand, I think of the, the thumb is kind of like the bass. <laughs> right. And uh, the first finger is kind of like treble. Yeah. And the pick is like the mid range. So that's kind of how my brain works. Yeah. I've had to think about this because I've, I've, done, I've done some teaching, a lot of teaching over the years at different places. I've had to, when I first started doing it, I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> yeah. and, I, and I really figured out how to explain, like I kept thinking about it, but that's probably the most important part of what I do. I mean, I love the gear I have, like I'm so happy with all of it. And uh, obviously, you know, I've learned a lot from uh, musicians about uh, the choices they make in their gear say a lot about what they prioritize. But all my gear is about getting the sound in my head and my heart and making the sound of my hands come through. Right. It's all about this for me. Yeah. And that these, this is where the dynamics really are. Yeah. And that's why I'm always working the volume knob too. Right. You know, it's, it kind of goes with the right hand. It's like all one thing. But uh, I try not to think about that regularly, but since you asked, that's yeah. kind of that's, that's <laughs> well, my approach. Well, the minute you think about it, then it becomes... Well, unnatural. I mean, when I'm playing music, I'm certainly not thinking about it. I right, mean, right. Like, you know, music is like, it's one of the only, you know, 
sanctuaries we have where we can shut out all the noise. That it's the meditation, man. And if you can't yeah. do that, you know, there's absolutely no reason to go through what you have to go to to do it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Um, speaking of, so I'll show you my, my horse. This is uh, old red here. So I bought this, this was a, a custom shop 336. Yeah. That I got in 2001 new from Elderly Instruments back to Michigan again, sure. got it online. And this has been my main guitar ever since. It's 22 years of music. Wow. Um, with Greg Allman, this is on everything. You know, the live record we did, uh, Southern Blood. Um, it's the main guitar. There were a couple other ones, but this was 75, 80% of the show would be this guitar. And my band, it was 100% of the show. I was playing this. So I was, this one I, I worked on with my buddy Paul Schwartz at Pika Moose Guitars in New York City over the last two decades. And we've tried a bunch of pickups. These are Wiz pickups in here okay, now. Okay, what's going on with... with <laughs> Why is it backwards? <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, so check this out. What's that about and what's that about? This is a good... This this guitar and that guitar <laughs> have some good stories. So, th so this one... Um, why is the pickup flipped? Well, uh, you remember Mike Voltz sure. from uh, Gibson, lovely yeah, yeah, yeah. man, and a great uh, guy, uh, amazing. And he, I was making my record, my solo record, Saving Grace in Memphis, uh, in about 2016. It was December 2016, so it's before the bankruptcy, and they had the Gibson ES shop, and he wanted to make me a signature model guitar, a signature model 336. So I was making my record. I was doing a day of overdubs with horns. So I dropped the guitar off for 24 hours. And when I brought the guitar in, he showed me the prototype of the Freddie King signature model. And Freddie King is, you know, we have the three kings and they're all equally important in the eyes of God and every player. But my personal favorite was Freddie. And the reason Freddie was my favorite was because he had the vocals, the guitar playing, and the material all the way through his career until really? he died that really resonated with me. You know, from the early records with obviously everyone knows Hideaway and San Jose, you know, straight up through the stuff with uh, King Curtis and the producing and then Leon Russell, you know, Freddie's like one of my main inspirations. Yeah. Um, so when I saw that guitar, I noticed Freddie always flipped his back pickup backwards and if you I don't know if they did it on the final signature model I didn't but they had a, they had had one of his guitars in the shop for a while and they were copying it and they were like it's backwards and I and I was like when you do my guitar do that um, and they did they did all the measurements on it and then I don't know they burned the factory to the ground I don't know what happened to them so yeah. that was lost to time God, that's right. Because yeah, these yeah. were all the acoustics were made in Memphis, or the the uh, yeah. the ES um, uh, the ES models yeah. were made in Memphis, and yeah. So that's why wow. I flipped it backwards. And as I said, these are the so, Wiz but, pickups. So is there any issue with with um, uh, phase with them with it flipped around? Well, like that? it's it's a little weird, but I I I go by what I hear. You know, I I had Paul install it, so I'm sure he did it the right way. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, the, uh, the, thing that, the thing that they didn't want to do at Gibson, of course, was put my, my volume, my master volume in the top of the F-hole because they didn't want it to cover the F-hole. So oh. they wanted to drill the face. But Paul Schwartz had this great idea to stick it in the top of the F-hole. That is really right? clever. And it's, it's got a harness. I was talking, you've been talking to our, our guy, Bruce Pearson, yeah. who's incredible uh, teching for us. And we were just talking about this harness earlier. And I mean, this harness is like brain surgery to deal with. Sadly, that's the that's the problem with doing a master volume like this. But, okay, so that's so that is a master volume, and the yeah. rest are just standard. Yeah, these are just normal. And then I put the tone on the 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 bridge pickup at about seven, and the the front I just roll off a little bit. But it's the master volume's a little crunchy right now. But you can really do like. <laughs> God, you can do cool, all that right? stuff. And of course, like dynamically with the guitar, I'm always playing with the volume. That's why this is here. So, yeah. you know, you can play a line like that's on, you know, five or six, but yeah. so it's a subtle difference. But, you know, I always like to play with that. And this is one of those wide, you know, pentameter. Well, I don't know how to say the yeah, word. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, it's got one of those wide mean. sweeps. In yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know anything about how any of this shit works. <laughs> right. I'm serious. Yeah, no, hey, I, man. I prefer to look at paintings and read books. Like, I'm not I'm not really into gear, yeah. but I love great sound. Yeah, yeah. So if, I'm obsessed with, like, 
the sound of it. Right. But you, I, I can't do, I can change strings. That's yeah, about it. Yeah, you drive the race car, <laughs> yeah, you don't build much. it. Yeah. 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 And I'm lucky enough to have guys like, you know, Paul Schwartz and Bruce who help me when things are broken. Um, yeah. But yeah, this is, this is my, I mean, if I had, you know, this is my Desert Island guitar. It's yeah. like if I had one guitar, this would be it. Um, but it's, it's unbelievable. I mean, they don't make these like this anymore at the yeah. time. <laughs> When they were marketing this, it was called tonally carved semi-hollow. Right. So it's carved like an L5 shrunken right. inside. Yeah. They don't do this guitar. It also has the slit, the slim 59 neck, yeah, which man. they don't do anymore either. Total sleepers, and they're yeah. surprisingly affordable. I mean, like a 335 is essentially plywood, yeah. and that's like carved maple, carved mahogany. They're I mean, great. my friend Mark Franklin, the trumpet player for the Greg Allman band. He's, he's a real shit talker. And one day he said to me, he said, what happened to your, your 335? It'd get, it'd get shrunk in the dryer. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 That's great, man. So um, what strings, and that's standard tuning, what strings yeah. are you running on on this one? Well, I've been working with String Joy right here in Nashville oh, yeah. lately. Okay. And I absolutely love their strings, man. Okay. It kinda, they kind of, you know, got the, the consistency of how they're made and the vintage style yeah. of how they sound, the nickel sound is, I love it. Um, and basically like, I play with sets depending on what guitar it is. Yeah. Most of my standard tuned guitars are nines, 9.5s, or tens. Huh. So I'm always messing around with that. Um, I have a like a Bruce Lee one finger punch theory of playing the electric guitar, which is the more resistance you have when you're bending strings, and the harder you hit the string, the more you're actually getting away from the amplifier doing the work hmm. and you're getting away from the sound coming from your dynamics wow i grew up playing thick gauges yeah. and the stevie thing man it, it influenced everybody yeah. right oh no that was it i mean that yeah. was the whole you know it was, it this was whole, that myth of like here, oh the only I mean. way to get it is yeah well it was part and and to be fair like so so i've had people talk to me about this part of the guitar a lot obviously this is like the big this is the, the 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 you know it's the fire of every forum is like what string gauge do you use yeah, right yeah. and then there's like this manly test in there yeah sadly it's you know we all know all the examples of you know hendrix was playing nines and billy gibbons plays nines with slide and all this shit uh Dwayne was playing nines he was using black diamond nines yeah you know we know all this is for a fact but somehow it doesn't sink in yeah. stevie ray was you know an absolute i mean he's like the glenn gould of the blues or something yeah, you know yeah, he's yeah. like just like the ultimate virtuoso interpreter of all blues that came before him yeah but the problem with what's going on with him was when he was playing with 12s or 13s he was you know he had a, a glass of beer with an eight ball of cocaine that he would shoot before he right. played the gig yeah and his fingers were bleeding at the end yeah yeah so i mean you know unless was... unless you want to do that yeah yeah you know, that's not a good long game. <laughs> yeah, he was yeah, also right. in his 20s. Yeah, right, right. And uh, I know for a fact that at the end of his life, he was playing with 10s or 11s tuned down a half step. Really? Yeah, once he was sober. Wow. Okay, there we go. <laughs> that, yeah. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things. I mean, what, Steve, he was like 34 or 35 when he died right. or something? Yeah. He was a young man, you know? Yeah. He seems younger all the time. Yeah, right. <laughs> Right, yeah. But I mean, you know, these, I don't know if these are the nines or the nine fives, but if you, you know, if you play, you know, it's totally clean right now. If I put the pedal on, I can get more dynamics out of it, but. And if I hit it harder, you know. So yeah. it's just, it's all in the, it's all letting the amp do the work for you. Yeah. You don't really have to pick that much harder, you know? Right, right. 
So anyway, that's 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 where I've gotten to with it. But, yeah, that's, you know, that's that. To is, each his own, man. You know. No, that's that's a very cool way to look at it. That's yeah. I learned something. Thank you. I mean, <laughs> okay, we're, we're so, all learning all the time. Yeah. That's the beauty of it. Okay, um, so it's little feet. You've got to have a strat. Well, this <laughs> this one I actually named Lowell. So there we go. There we go. This yeah. this is the one that really you know. So this was my first electric guitar. Oh wow! How great! I sold a, I sold a like a Nintendo video game system, and then my parents made up the difference. It was a Strat Plus. Yeah. When I got it, it was new, uh, in the '80s, and I got it because I had just seen uh, Fred Strat Plus of all things. <laughs> all right. It was a summer where I saw <clears throat> I saw Fred and I saw Clapton and I saw Warren Haynes and they were all playing Strat Pluses. And yeah. I said, I got to see what's going on with this yeah, yeah. if I'm going to get an electric guitar. Because my house had acoustic guitars. It didn't have electric guitars. And uh, so it used to have lace sensors. Now it has Lauer pickups. That Chicago steel and the bridge again. Um, what's going on here? Okay, so this is the, it's an open A, like Lowell would be. And by the way, this guitar has like 12s on it. And the, the G has 13s. So they all have different gauges. Um, and you can see the battery in there. This is the Strata Blaster, Alembic Strata Blaster, which is a mid boost that uh, Lowell had in his Strat. Oh, okay. Okay. And uh, he used to have a Telecaster pickup back here that was pretty loud. So I decided to go with this and goose it up a little bit. The knob, this, this is my ghost story of doing this gig. Uh, when I had to return to touring with these guys, when I was deciding to use this guitar, and I had the Strata Bastard put in, and I, I had this pickup put in, and I had it routed. I said, this is going to be the guitar to play the open A lull shit. Yeah. I was getting ready to put it in the flight case, and I started turning the knob, and the knob came off and broke. It was the original knob. I'd never had a problem with it before. So I took it to a guitar store, this place, Stockade in Kingston, New York. And when I got there, uh, he's like, man, I only have one knob left. And it's a telly knob. And I was like, all right, just give me whatever you got. And he puts it on. And I said, you know, I should look at a picture of Will's guitar. And I open it up, and there it is. Here you go. It's the one that's in the Rock Hall of Fame. So apparently he used to like to use these. Uh. But then I threw it in the case, and I came to play with these guys. So that's my, How great. my ghost story. <laughs> yeah, OK, that's, that's, that's perfect. So but uh, you know, basically, you know, I got, we'll talk about the board, but I got you gotta have the two compressors on to get what's called unity gain, which is, as far as I know, it's something Lowell came up with. Uh, and it's, to me, it's like the key of his sound. Um, so that's just, without the Strata Blaster. Now I'll put the Strata Blaster on. So that to me is really his show. You can do all that fancy stuff. So great. But I mean, that's little George, man. I mean, you know, that's...